If you're hoping to break into tech or pivot into a new job family, figuring out which career path is right for you isn't easy, especially when the job titles sound so similar and the roles have a good amount of overlap. Data analytics, data engineering, data science, machine learning engineering, software engineering. While there are definitely similarities, the day-to-day -day work and the type of person who thrives in each role couldn't be more different. And if you choose wrong, you could end up spending a ton of time and money building skills you'll never use, or worse, be stuck in a job that you don't really like. After years of working across these roles myself and mentoring people breaking into tech, I've seen way too many folks realize six months into their new job that they picked the wrong path. So today, I'm breaking down exactly what you need to know about each of these careers to make the right choice for you. Not just the job descriptions, but the real day-to-day -day work. What kind of problems will you actually solve? What skills do you really need? And most importantly, what role fits you and your personality? We'll cover the surprising differences between data science, analytics, and engineering roles, the pros and cons you might not know about just from reading the job descriptions, and how much money you can expect to make in each role. By the end of this video, you'll have a super clear picture of which which path is right for you. No more confusion or doubt. Let's get to it. Let's start with data analysts. You know those articles that say millennials are killing the napkin industry or this new product increased sales by 47%. There's probably a data analyst behind those insights, digging into the numbers to figure out what's going on with the business and why. You can think of data analysts as kind of like business detectives. For example, when the marketing team is trying to figure out why their latest campaign flopped or the product team needs to understand why users are dropping off at a specific feature, analysts are the ones who figure it out. Here's what their day might look like. The head of marketing maybe has an urgent question. Our Instagram ads are costing twice as much as last month. What's going on? The analyst dives in, pulling data from multiple sources, writing SQL queries, and making visualizations to piece together the story. After some investigation, they discover that the team has been targeting the wrong audience segment, and a simple fix ends up saving the company thousands of dollars on ad spend. If that sounds fun to you, let's break down what you actually need to succeed in this role. First, the technical stuff. SQL is number one. You'll be using this all day, every day. Visualization tools like Tableau or Power BI will also be a big part of your work. You'll likely need to be comfortable with Excel for data wrangling and simple visualizations. Basic Python or R will be needed for more complex analyses. And you'll need just enough stats knowledge to know if your findings are legit or just some random noise. But what can often be missed is that the most important skills for really great analysts aren't technical at all. You need the ability to translate vague business questions into concrete analyses, communication skills to explain complex findings to stakeholders, business intuition to know which questions actually matter, and critically, the ability to tell a story with data. In terms of compensation, data analysts in the US have a median salary of around $106,000 a year. Not bad for one of the more accessible paths into tech. Now for some pros and cons. The good stuff about being an analyst. It's one of the easier tech roles to break into, usually no PhD required. The skills of a data analyst are valuable across industries like healthcare, finance, marketing, and tech, so there are more opportunities outside of traditional tech companies, which means more job opportunities. You get to see the impact of your work quickly. When you find an insight that saves the company money or improves a product, people will notice. The skills you learn set you up well to transition into data science or even roles like product management later on if you want to. If you enjoy both solving puzzles and storytelling, this role lets you do both. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. You'll spend more time cleaning messy data than you probably expect, which can be tedious. Analysts typically work with structured data and predefined questions, which can feel a little bit repetitive or less exploratory compared to other roles. The role generally requires less coding and technical expertise, so if you're someone who really wants to be learning new techniques and tools, it might not be a fit. The pay, while it is definitely good, typically caps out lower than engineering roles. And here's the biggest one, in my opinion. You will get a lot more ad hoc requests from stakeholders. It can end up being a really reactionary role, where you're just handling what gets put in front of you versus being able to strategically think about the kinds of projects that you think are most interesting or impactful, or what you think is best for your career. So if you like the idea of working with Data, but you want more autonomy and higher technical challenges, you might want to consider our next role, data engineering. These are the folks who build the infrastructure that makes an analyst's job possible. Let me show you what I mean. Imagine Netflix. Every second, millions of users are streaming shows, rating content, and searching for titles. All of that creates a ton of data. Data engineers are the ones who build the systems that capture all this information, clean it up, and make sure it ends up in the right place for others to use. Here's what that actually looks like. Let's say Netflix wants to build a new recommendation system. While the data scientists or machine learning engineers are brainstorming algorithms, the data engineer has to figure out how to build systems to ingest and process millions of real-time events per second from user devices, design data models that can track user identity and behavior across shared accounts, ensure data is properly indexed and cached for fast access by recommendation systems, set up monitoring to catch data quality issues and pipeline failures before users are affected, implement validation rules and checks to ensure data accuracy and completeness at each step. If this sounds like a technical puzzle you'd enjoy solving, here's what you'd need in your toolkit. Strong Python or Java skills, but mostly Python. Deep knowledge of databases, both SQL 
SQL, and NoSQL, experience with data processing tools like Airflow, Spark, and Hadoop, cloud platform expertise, experience with streaming technologies like Kafka and Kinesis, and most importantly, a keen attention to detail. Money-wise, data engineers in the US typically make around 155,000 in total comp. Let's talk about what makes this role really great. You get to solve complex technical challenges that actually matter. There's a lot of satisfaction that comes from building systems that work flawlessly. The field keeps evolving with new tools and challenges, so you're always learning. And there's strong job security since every tech company needs data infrastructure. But of course, there are some downsides. Your best work often goes unnoticed. Nobody comments when the data pipeline works perfectly. You might feel like you're always playing a support role to data scientists or machine learning engineers who build on top of your foundational work. The on-call responsibilities can be demanding when data pipelines break. And at bigger companies, you might be stuck maintaining legacy systems instead of building new ones. So if you love building reliable systems and you don't need the spotlight, this could be your perfect role. The satisfaction comes from knowing that data scientists, analysts, and basically everyone else in the company relies on your work to do their jobs. Speaking of data scientists, if you're more interested in using data to answer questions nobody has ever figured out before, you might want to stick around for our next section. Data science is probably the most hyped of all these roles, but the reality might surprise you. Data science is probably the most confusing role of all because nobody can seem to agree on what they actually do across different companies. But here's the general idea. Data scientists tackle ambiguous problems that can't be solved with simple analysis. They build statistical models to predict customer behavior, design experiments to measure causality, and develop algorithms to automate complex decisions. While analysts might tell you what happened last quarter, data scientists build models to predict what will happen next quarter. But before any sophisticated modeling happens, there's usually weeks of cleaning messy data, defining what success actually means, and maybe convincing stakeholders that the new approach is worth the investment. Let me give you an example. Imagine you're a data scientist at DoorDash, and you're tasked with predicting delivery times. You have lots of historical data to work with, so this should be pretty straightforward, right? Well, first you need to figure out what data actually matters. Is it traffic? Weather? Restaurants' busy hours? What mood the drivers are in? Then you discover that half your historical data is missing key features, and you need to get creative about how to handle that. You build a model, and it works great, except during rain, or sports events, and so on. Just when you think you've got it figured out and you're done, someone asks, but can we explain this to our restaurant partners? And depending on your team, you might also need to deploy this model to production and make sure it behaves as expected once real users are relying on it. This brings us to what you actually need to succeed. Python or R skills for everything from data cleaning to modeling, but again, typically Python. Python, a strong statistics background, machine learning knowledge for building predictive models, SQL for getting your hands on the data you need, and crucially, the ability to explain complex concepts to people from non-technical all the way up to PhDs. In terms of compensation, data scientists in the US typically make around $168,000 in total comp. Now, what makes this role awesome? Despite recent layoffs and fears around AI, there continues to be strong global demand for data scientists. Data scientists typically earn more than data analysts and often on par with data engineers and machine learning engineers. There's a lot of flexibility in the kinds of roles available and industries to work in. The role can vary significantly, with tasks ranging from predictive modeling to supporting analytics or business teams. And there are lots of jobs in industries from finance to healthcare to tech. The field is constantly evolving, so you're always learning. And when your models work, they can have a measurable impact, which can be really satisfying. But of course, there are challenges. The barrier to entry is high, with most roles requiring an advanced degree and or significant experience. Like with analytics, there's lots of time spent on the more mundane data cleaning side of things. Similarly, new folks often expect to work on cutting edge AI, but they find themselves performing more routine analysis or visualization tasks. The role is super ambiguous. What makes a good data scientist varies widely between companies. You need to be okay with figuring out your niche in a company and learning a lot on your own, kind of forever. And finally, the career progression is less defined than in engineering roles. What makes someone a senior data scientist can vary significantly from company to company. Data science is ideal for those who thrive in multidisciplinary and exploratory environments. It's not the best choice if you want to work on more cutting edge technical challenges, since that's not a major part of many roles. If that bums you out, the next role might be a better fit. Let's talk about machine learning engineers. You can think of it this way. If data scientists are like researchers testing new recipes in a kitchen, machine learning engineers are the ones who figure out how to serve those recipes to thousands of people every day with a meal delivery service. Here's a scenario. You're a machine learning engineer at Uber, and the data science team has built this amazing model that predicts surge pricing. Sounds great, but now you have to make it return predictions in milliseconds, not seconds, ensure it works 24-7 without crashing, handle millions of requests during peak hours, update the model without disrupting service, monitor it, and make sure nothing unexpected happens. So machine learning engineers are kind of a bridge between data science and software engineering. To thrive in this role, you need a pretty unique skill set, including strong software engineering fundamentals, deep experience with machine learning frameworks and tools like PyTorch, Hugging Face, and MLflow, system design skills to handle scale, think distributed training and model serving, practical machine learning expertise to optimize model performance and troubleshoot issues, and production engineering skills for things like monitoring, debugging, and performance tuning. Now, one of the really nice things about this role is that machine learning engineers typically make around $250,000 in total comp in the US. So that's pretty cool. 
some other things that make this role awesome. You often get to work with cutting edge tech. Your impact is super clear. Your systems directly affect users in a measurable way. The role has a somewhat clearer career progression than data science and data analytics since they're in the engineering family. It's growing super fast right now. There are a lot of jobs out there for highly skilled machine learning engineers. And you get to solve some really fun technical puzzles. But of course, like with all these roles, there are challenges. Like data science, machine learning engineering has higher entry barriers since it requires a strong background in both machine learning and software engineering, often with advanced degrees or significant experience required. The field moves incredibly fast, so you'll need to enjoy continuous self-study to keep up, which might be a pro for some. Production issues can be stressful. Often, machine learning models just don't work like you want them to. It might be a data quality issue or just a really hard problem to solve, and there won't be a way to get the accuracy you want. You have to be okay with ambiguous problems with no clear right answer. The work of a machine learning engineer is less about inventing new algorithms and more about making existing ones work reliably at scale. This career is ideal for folks who like engineering, but are okay with or even energized by working on problems that are ambiguous and might not have a correct answer. So if you're listening to this and thinking you'd rather work on more traditional software systems where things are a bit more predictable, our next role might be for you. Let's talk about software engineering, where your code either works or doesn't, mostly. While everyone is talking about AI and machine learning, software engineers are quietly building pretty much everything that you use every day. The apps on your phone, the websites you browse, and even the systems that keep planes in the air. Let me walk you through what software engineering actually looks like. Say you're a software engineer at Spotify and you're working on a new podcast feature. Your day, or really month, might involve starting with a product spec and architecture discussion about how to handle the new podcast clip sharing feature, breaking down the technical requirements, media timing APIs, cross-platform compatibility, sharing protocols, and more. Writing code and tests for the feature while considering edge cases and performance, collaborating with other teams on API design and integration points, deploying changes gradually, monitoring for errors, and iterating based on user feedback. What makes software engineering both challenging and satisfying is that you're building systems that impact millions of users. Here's what you need in your toolkit for the job. Strong coding fundamentals and experience with modern languages, so Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Go, and so on. Practical knowledge of data structures, algorithms, and system design. Experience with cloud services, containers, and deployment tools. Understanding of testing practices, CICD pipelines and monitoring, and the ability to write maintainable code and effectively debug production issues. The median total comp for software engineers is 182,000 in the US. Not quite as high as ML engineers, but still pretty sweet. Let's talk about some other things that make this role really fun. Your work is tangible. You build things that actually exist. There's a clear feedback loop. Your code either works or it doesn't. Software engineers are essential in almost every industry, making this a highly versatile career path where you can choose to focus on a lot of different areas. Similarly, you can focus on many different specializations based on what you like best from front-end, back-end, full-stack, DevOps, or even things like blockchain or augmented reality. And compared to the data and ML jobs we've discussed, it's easier to get in the door. While degrees can definitely help, Many software engineers start through boot camps or self-study, making the field more accessible. Here are some of the trade-offs. It can be a bit more repetitive and less imaginative than data or ML roles. Like machine learning engineering, you need to be continuously learning new tools and frameworks. Though again, this could be a pro for the more intellectually curious. Also like machine learning engineering, you'll be working with production systems that have a lot of pressure if something goes wrong. You'll likely be on call from time to time and have fire drills when things break. So while data roles are amazing for solving complex analytical problems, software engineering is perfect if you love building concrete solutions and seeing more immediate results. Now that we've covered each role, let's talk about how to actually choose between them. In my opinion, they all sound pretty fun, uh, but picking the wrong one can mean months or years of building skills you won't use, or worse, being stuck in a role that drains your energy all day. So if you're still feeling unsure, I've created a little quiz that walks you through all of the factors we just discussed. It asks you targeted questions about your preferences, skills, working style, and more to help you match with the right role. You can find it linked in the description below. It's free and takes like five minutes to complete. In the meantime, let's break this down with some more real examples to help you decide. Here are some key decision factors. First step, do you prefer building or discovering? This is huge because it completely changes how your day-to-day -day work feels. Imagine you're working on a project to improve user engagement with a new collaboration feature. As a software engineer, you're the one who actually builds the new feature. When it's deployed, you'll see people use it immediately, so there's pretty concrete results. As a data engineer, you're building pipelines to track how people use the feature. Your success is measured in how reliable and comprehensive the data flow is. As a machine learning engineer, you're evaluating the matching algorithm's performance and trying to figure out why latency is worse for some groups or why the algorithm and performs poorly on a subset of the users. As a data scientist, you're diving into user behavior patterns, testing hypotheses about what makes people engage more. Some days you'll find amazing results, other days you'll realize your theory was wrong and you'll have to start over. And if you're a data analyst, you're focused on answering specific questions. Which user groups love the feature? Where are people dropping off? That kind of thing. So as you can see, some roles give you the satisfaction of building concrete things, while others are more about exploration and discovery. Next up, 
How much structure do you want in your role? Think about it like this. Software engineers and data engineers often have clear tasks. Build this feature or create this pipeline. You know exactly what success looks like. But data scientists, their tasks are more like figure out why users are leaving or make our recommendations better. This is way more ambiguous. Machine learning engineers sit somewhere in the middle. You have concrete engineering tasks, but with the uncertainty of machine learning in thrown in for fun. Data analysts might get specific questions, but often have to figure out the right approach themselves. Now let's talk about skills because this is often where people get tripped up. Here's a scenario. You love math and you're excited about AI. Naturally, you think I should become a data scientist. But hold up, do you actually enjoy explaining complex concepts to non-technical people? Writing detailed analysis documents? Dealing with ambiguous business problems? If not, you might be happier as a machine learning engineer where you can work with ML but focus more on the engineering side. Or maybe you love working with data, but you hate the idea of being on call for production systems. In that case, data analytics or data science might be a better fit than data engineering or software engineering. Let's talk about the barriers to entry too, because this matters a lot in the real world. If you want to get started quickly, data analytics is your fastest path. You can learn the core tools, SQL, Excel visualization in just a few months. Software engineering has a steeper learning curve, but boot camps and self-study can get you there without a degree. Data engineering roles usually want some software engineering experience first, but you can also get in without advanced degrees at least. On the other hand, data science and machine learning engineering often require advanced degrees and or significant experience. Not always, if you're exceptional, but often. Ultimately, there are trade-offs to all of these options, but your success will come from aligning your career choice with what excites you most and playing to your strengths. One thing to keep in mind is that the lines between roles can be blurry, and it's common to find significant overlap between data and engineering roles. Picture a startup with 50 people. Their data scientist is probably doing analytics on Monday, training machine learning models on Tuesday, and figuring out data pipelines on Wednesday. Meanwhile, their software engineer is learning ML ops because someone needs to deploy those models. Even at larger companies, the boundaries blur. So software engineers may work with ML tooling and model serving infrastructure. Data scientists sometimes write production code and actually end up owning the full end-to-end -end ML pipeline. Data engineers may architect feature stores and experiment tracking systems for ML systems, and everyone gets involved in reliability and monitoring. The overlap isn't a bad thing. It actually creates natural pathways to transition between roles. So if you do end up picking a role that's not perfect for you, all is not lost. Let me show you some common routes that people take. Data analyst to data scientist. Many analysts use their foundational skills in data querying and visualization to move into data science. Adding statistical analysis, machine learning, and more rigorous programming to their toolkit can help kind of bridge the gap. But transitioning often requires additional education, such as a master's degree or at least certifications, and hands-on experience with data science projects. Software engineer to data engineer or software engineer to machine learning engineer. Software engineers with a strong background in building systems often transition into data engineering, where they apply their coding and system design expertise to data infrastructure. Or they may acquire knowledge of machine learning frameworks and algorithms to enable switching into a machine learning engineer role. Data scientist to machine learning engineer. This was my path. Data scientists with a focus on building and deploying models may transition into machine learning engineering by strengthening their software engineering skills and ML ops knowledge. Gaining experience with ML pipelines and production environments is key here. So career transitions definitely require targeted skill building, but they are achievable with some deliberate effort and strategic project choices. If you're just starting out, one good strategy might be to consider roles that offer broad exposure, like data analytics or software engineering, to build a versatile foundation. Similarly, if you're looking to pivot, focus on acquiring complementary skills that bridge the gap between your current role and your target role. Remember, your career is a journey, not a fixed destination. So focus on building skills, solving meaningful problems, and staying open to opportunities as they come. Choosing between these roles, data analytics, data engineering, data science, machine learning engineering, and software engineering can definitely feel daunting, but the right choice is the one that aligns with your passions, strengths, and long-term goals. If you're still not feeling 100% sure, check out the free quiz linked in the description to help you figure out which role is the best fit for you. Let me know in the comments which path you end up choosing. And if you're interested in becoming a data scientist, I have a really comprehensive video with a complete roadmap on how to go from an absolute beginner to your first job. Definitely check that out next. If you found this useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.